another hurdle for the Republicans' health care plan, a last-minute effort to bring the bill to the floor before President Trump's first 100-day mark, did not happen again last night. Despite Democratic pushback, House Speaker Paul Ryan sounded optimistic about the party's plan to repeal and replace Obamacare. I think we're, we're making very good progress. Don't have, we're going to go when we have the votes. But that's the decision we'll make when we have it. And something tells you you'll probably be the first to know when that happens. Um, I would argue that this is, is a bill that a moderate would more likely want to support. I say to moderate Republicans in the House, if you didn't like the first version, you sure shouldn't like this version. And frankly, you'll pay a huge price in the 2018 elections if you vote for it. Joining us right now exclusively this morning is the CEO of Celgene, Mark Aulis, which reported earnings yesterday, better than expected, actually. Mark, it's good to see you. Thanks, Maria. Thank Great you so much here. for joining us. I want to talk about the growth story at Celgene for sure, but let's start on the president and what we're seeing in terms of this health care bill. What do you think things look, look like once we do get a new health care bill in place? Do you think things change from yeah, your end of it? No, I appreciate the question. We were together in January at the J.P. Morgan Health Care and talked about repeal, replace. And the message that I delivered then was it's a refinement opportunity. Here we are now where we know that premiums, deductibles, that in fact insurance companies are dropping out state by state routinely from participation in ACA uh, pools. And a lot of that is because of the population, the high risk nature of those pools. So there's an inevitability that the government and I think Speaker Ryan's idea along with I think a bipartisan approach to create the kind of subsidies for the high risk pools that are actually causing the issue of these insurance companies not being able to stay in the ACA exchanges, that has to be fixed. There are 20 to 30 million Americans who have enrolled in these plans over time, if we don't subsidize certain aspects of it, it will simply fail. So we are big supporters of what the House blueprint looks like for the repeal, kind of replace, as I've said before, refinement approach. But in the end, something has to happen or the ACA system as it has been constructed and is executed, it will fail. So we are big supporters of trying to refine it and create the kind of, uh, of alignment between stakeholders at the state and federal level. It's been expensive, not just for people who are seeing their premiums up in the triple digits in some states, but also for companies, right, in terms of uh, insurance. It's been much higher cost than people thought. Yeah, and that's the vicious cycle. We're in a vicious cycle now where if we don't realign and create aligned incentives, we don't readjust the pools so that the shared cost of the high-risk pools and the, the healthier populations come together. Like any insurance scheme, the ACA system simply can't survive. Yeah, that's true. And that, that's why we're, we're seeing... I, do you think we will get a bill in the next couple of weeks? I think we have to because yeah. this also links to corporate tax reform. So right. the bigger picture for all of us is to create incentives for America across the globe to bring jobs back to the U.S., to create jobs in the U.S. If we don't get an ACA health care uh, fix is going to be very difficult to get to corporate tax reform. Were you happy with the president's sort of principles, white paper that he came out with this week on what he'd like to see in tax reform? I, I absolutely am. And in fact, I was in Washington on Wednesday meeting with members of the House and the Senate talking about the broad brushstrokes of it. And of course, this territorial system is very important for, for tax reform. How that actually plays out is a little uncertain right now. I think the devil will be in the details. But remember, without health care reform, without a, 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 a sort of refinement approach, corporate tax reform is going to be very, very difficult to realize. Yeah, they haven't articulated a number yet, but it looks like that repatriation number that, that in order to bring money from overseas Correct. to the U.S. could be at around 10 percent, uh, which is a great number. You think that the five trillion dollars that's sitting overseas would come here if, in fact, it's lowered to 10 percent? I think this is a moment in time, Maria, where the Congress has an opportunity to create and a, an effectiveness and a competitiveness in the U.S., unlike we've seen for probably 30 or 40 years. I agree with you. There's a competitive index score for countries around the world. The U.S. today, because of tax, ranks about 35th. If we mm. change that, we could be 31st. We could go from 35th to, let's say, the top five. Yeah, that's a great point. All right, let's turn to earnings. You reported sure. earnings this week, and, of course, the, it was a mixed quarter. The company beat estimates on earnings per share, of course, but revenue is being talked about as being a little slower than expected due to uh, some soft demand for the psoriasis drug. Right. Stock was down on that yesterday. How would you characterize the quarter? Well, we had an outstanding quarter. It is true that Tesla, our product for psoriasis, had a little bit of a down quarter, but it was a one-time event. We entered managed care contracts 
contracts with the product at the end of last year, we were able to, in one quarter of access for patients in America, double the number of covered lives such that almost 100 million more people through major health plans in the United States have step-free access. That is, they're able to get a prescription for a drug without having to go through any other therapy for their psoriasis. That's a big deal. So from an access point of view, that created some unfavorability in gross to net, but that's something we'll adjust to on the volume side. The other thing that happened, and you saw this with a lot of the peer companies in the psoriasis space, dermatology, rheumatology, prescriptions in that space contracted in a major way. So something like a 5 to 8 percent contraction in seasonal prescriptions for these drugs. Yeah, you also raised guidance for the rest of you the did. year. What are you seeing in the rest of the year? I know you've got a great product pipeline right. to come. How does that lead growth going forward? Well, uh, let me just say, we updated our guidance, our adjusted EPS guidance for the year uh, after the earnings from yesterday. So we did a beat and raise for the year. We're very, very proud of that. Uh, but our pipeline, early, mid, late stage pipeline is positioned beautifully. Remember, we're a company that is building franchises in hematology, oncology and immunology like psoriasis and these other diseases. So our pipeline is going very, we have a drug in front of the FDA right now for acute myeloid leukemia, one of the most lethal forms of leukemia and we expect that by August that drug would be approved. So we're in great position for the year. Importantly, we are looking at exceeding or being able to meet and exceed our 2020 outlook as well. We talked to investors about that yesterday. And the FDA, ha have things become easier in terms of getting things moving through the FDA, or are we still talking about a real bureaucratic situation? Yeah, so Maria, thanks for that. First, I think the appointment of Scott Gottlieb is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So when we think about reform at FDA, regulatory opportunity at FDA, Scott Gottlieb is a reformer. He's a physician. He's a cancer survivor. Wow. He's someone who can actually reform. And let's, let's talk about pricing just for a second. 90% of prescriptions are for generic products. If we unleash the backlog of generics at the FDA, we could, in fact, avoid by creating competition, the kind of outlier things that we saw with drugs like Daraprim from Dur Turing Pharmaceuticals, right. the EpiPen story, et cetera. The huge price So increases. we need to unleash the generic market so the prices come down. Sounds like that's what's happening. Yeah, I think it will. Great. Mark, good to Thanks, see you. Thanks, Maria. You Thank too. you so much for joining us. Mark Allis okay. there, Celgene CEO. Coming